Disney, yeah, I gotta explain this. So the reason Nemo's an only child and can't celebrate Mother's Day outside of a graveyard is because a barracuda came and nearly clapped his entire bloodline. One problem though, barracuda don't eat clownfish, but you know who does? According to extensive research, Google, clownfish are known cannibals that will spawn kill and eat their own young. Oh, but that's not all. In clownfish society, the females are bigger, stronger, and more dominant than the guys. So if Marlin's wife went on a murking spree, I'm talking full cannibal lector, he would have been too weak to stop her. So what if his wife Casey Anthony, man I use that joke a lot. What if his wife squad wiped his family and then he was so traumatized that he blamed an imaginary barracuda for the mass genocide of his children? And what if as a coping mechanism he pretended that he was able to save one which he named Nemo? A name that literally means nobody. It actually makes sense. Makes sense because if his wife was actually killed in front of him, according to clownfish rules, he would turn into a female to replace her. That could explain his severe trust issues after the love of his life erased his entire family. Disney, you have 24 hours to respond or I'm just gonna assume the worst. Dark facts about finding Nemo. Nemo would have suffered a brutal death once he got flushed. As a saltwater fish, his body would be used to pulling in water. But in a sewer plant with fresh water, that water would just get forced into his body. Basically, he'd get internally waterboarded until he died a painful, water-intoxicated death. Finding Nemo convinced millions of dumb kids that they could flush their fish back into the ocean. What they really did was commit unintentional homicide because their fish would get eviscerated by sewer treatment machines. If you were one of those kids, you're a murderer. When Bruce cries about never meeting his father, there's truth in that. Some female sharks will give it up to so many guys that one litter of shark pups can have five dads. Even if his father didn't dip like a future pro athlete, Bruce would have no way of knowing who his real dad was because his mother was for the trenches. If you rewatch Finding Nemo, you'll realize that Nigel the Pelican last saw Nemo seemingly dead in the fish bag. This scene is the last time we see him, so there's a good chance he went the rest of his life thinking Nemo got killed in front of him, and he probably blames himself for it. Since all clownfish are born male, Marlin would became the dominant female once his wife died, and since there were no other clownfish around, he would have done something to Nemo that no amount of fish therapy would ever heal. Dark Finding Nemo facts that you will unfollow me for. Nemo was more likely to get cannibalized by his own father than eaten by a barracuda. Barracuda don't eat clownfish or their eggs, but you know who does? Nemo's biggest op wouldn't be a cuda, it'd be his own flesh and blood. Since a whale's respiratory and digestive tracts aren't connected like a human's, it wouldn't have been able to shoot them out his blowhole. Instead, they would have been forced into one of its four stomachs where they would have been dissolved alive by the acid. But they wouldn't make it that far because the moment they decided to just keep swimming to the bottom of the ocean would be the moment we saw credits. Anglerfish live more than 6,000 feet underwater. At more than a mile underwater, they'd be under more pressure than a firstborn with immigrant parents. In fact, that much pressure would crush them and force their organs out of their mouth. Not a Disney way to die. Dory would have had a caudal spine that could severely injure people or even Marlin if she forgot to be careful. I mean, not like she forgets a whole lot anyway. Dory could fade you because those spines could cause deep wounds that result in swelling, discoloration, and infections. On top of that, she'd be toxic enough to poison people, although I've heard people say the same thing about a voice actor. Okay, fair enough, I should probably explain this. As a clownfish, Nemo would be a saltwater fish, and water moves from higher concentration to lower concentration. Stay with me, I swear to Tom Brady this is gonna make sense. So a fish surrounded by salt water means there's a higher concentration of water inside the fish. So high to low, water would leave the fish. So to avoid losing water and joining his mother in the afterlife, Nemo would constantly be taking water in while his kidneys pumped the salt out. Now if you put Nemo in fresh water, the opposite happens. In fresh water, there would now be a higher concentration of water outside of Nemo's body. So high to low, water would get pushed into Nemo's cells. But since Nemo spent his entire life in the ocean, he'd be used to swallowing water the way an alcoholic stepfather swallows Budweiser. So Nemo would become overhydrated, his cells would fill with water, and he would be dead before the sequel. So no, fish don't really drown, but they can die of water intoxication, and it's not a good way to get series finale. Since I ruined this movie for a lot of people, here's facts Finding Nemo got right. Marlin would probably survive the jellyfish because as a clownfish, he's covered in mucus that makes him resistant to sea anemones and homicidal smuckers fish. Also, the scene where he tells Nemo to brush against the anemone before school is accurate. They brush to build immunity and get the sea anemone used to their presence. If they didn't do this, the sea anemone would sting them every time they entered, which they'd survive, but it'd be annoying. The East Australian current is real, and every summer, sea turtles use it to travel from the Great Barrier Reef to Sydney. Females will use it to return to the same beach year after year to lay eggs. Also, Crush was not capping about his age. There are documented cases of sea turtles living to a century and a half, and one allegedly survived 400 trips around the sun. When Bruce relapses like a junkie for nose powder, his eyes turn black like a demon guppy. Shark eyes actually turn white when they're about to put someone on the news because they roll their eyes back to protect themselves. In the beginning, Coral defends her eggs against a barracuda while Marlin begs her to come inside. In Clownfish society, females are tougher and more dominant, so it makes sense that she'd be the one more likely to defend them. Her mistake was that not only are barracuda one of the fastest fish, they respond to motion, so her darting towards the eggs kept her out of the sequel. If Lion King were scientifically accurate, it would just be case after case. First of all, dark remains are more desirable in lion society, so Scar should have been king to begin with. Next, when a new male lion becomes leader, the first thing he does is murder all the children from his previous successor, meaning Scar would have personally aborted Simba and Nala. Which brings me to my next point. Mufasa was the alpha lion, meaning any cubs we saw were fathered by him. Especially since we never see any other adult male lions. So yeah, Simba and Nala were half-siblings. Not distant, twice-removed cousins. Not stuck in the dryer step-siblings. 
I'm talking full-on West Virginia family reunion blood siblings. This scene would have been a case and a half. But before he Hakuna her Tadas, Nala would have killed Simba right here. Remember, Nala was starving and was fighting over what was a limited resource. Not this kind of starving, but for food. And when lions are hungry enough, they'll reach a state of psychosis where they'll do literally anything for food, even cannibalizing cubs. That and the fact that Simba had zero fighting experience means Nala would have folded him like a backyard lawn chair. He also would have lost a scar because again, no fighting experience. Even if Simba won, Simba was gone for at least three years. Meaning Simba would murder any child Scar had in this time. y'all want to know what happened to Mufasa's body. Technically the answer is in the movie, so watch this. Birds like the vulture and marabou stork would have eaten his dead body. But there's a catch. Vultures have really weak beaks and feet, so they would have had to wait for an animal to tear him apart to make it easier for them. The question is, who got to his body first? These are the primary suspects. Hyenas and lions kill each other out of competition, not for food. Lions don't like the taste of hyena meat and probably vice versa, so safe to say they probably didn't eat Mufasa. African wild dogs are such efficient hunters that they don't have to resort to scavenging, so they're out. Jackals are notorious scavengers, but again, they wouldn't have found the taste of lion meat appealing, so they wouldn't have done it either. Here's where I'm gonna mess you up. Worms, maggots, and corpse beetles would have gotten to his body first. Likely the same bugs that Simba ate would have been the ones that defiled his father's carcass. They would have created openings that would have made it easier for these guys to finish the job. And since guys like the Lamagear specialize in eating bones after a few days, there'd be nothing left. It wasn't Scar or the hyenas, it was actually vultures and bugs. Send this to a friend to ruin their childhood. I was actually hoping I get a comment like that because I really want to talk about it. So we all can agree that Lion King was based off the Shakespeare play Hamlet. I do not remember a letter of it, but I do know there's a scene where he holds a skull. In Hamlet, the skull belonged to your King Hamlet's jester. So if Scar holding a skull is a reference to this, we can assume that it was one of his jesters that he probably got tired of and killed. Makes sense because that skull is too small to be a lion's, but it's actually perfect baboon size. So if we put the pieces together, maybe Scar had a baboon as a jester, got tired of his nonsense, cancelled him, and now keeps his sunbleed skull as an R-rated keepsake. That would explain why he now forces Zazu to entertain him, because the old entertainment guy is now dead. And again, since Lion King is based off Hamlet, this actually makes more sense than Scar keeping the skull of his murdered brother. Or maybe I'm just overanalyzing a kid's movie from 1994 because I honestly have nothing better to do. But I like the first one, so I'm going with that. Cursed images in nature you're gonna wish you never saw. A moose shedding its velvet. A jaguar on some Junjutsu Tsukiyomi. The larvae of the blue bottle fly. Telescope fish. Man's tripped acid, stumbled into the ninth dimension and saw some shit that he can never take back. A moth covered in mind-controlling fungus that basically turns it into a zombie. The devil's tooth. Basically an Australian mushroom marinated with Lucifer's love nectar. Seaweed that does not look like seaweed. The skeleton of a pufferfish. If you had to see this, make sure your friends do too. First image is that if I have to see, so do you. A fungus called Xylaria polymorpha, aka dead man's fingers. An anemone known as Dauphinia armata. This type can inflict stings that take months to heal and take a wild guess where you can find it. A giant isopod in reason 300 I'm staying out of the ocean. A snaggle tooth snake eel, they can grow to three and a half feet long. This image doesn't seem cursed until you realize just how close to death this person was. And in case you don't see it, there it is. A harpy eagle, and y'all already know how I feel about this. Yeah, this isn't any better. A paku fish. Fun fact, one actually bit a man's testicles off, so the more you know. A town in Brisbane was stalked by a giant kangaroo. People didn't take it seriously until this picture surfaced. I'm not gonna say it. I'm not gonna say it. I am not gonna say it. I am not gonna say it. If you're not a kangaroo and want to be built like one, well, make sure you hit that link. You proud of yourself? Not really. Cursed images that you are going to unfollow me for. Someone told me that beluga whales look like they have lost human souls trapped in their bodies and I haven't been able to look at them the same. Those aren't legs, they're actually rolls of fat, but knowing that doesn't make this picture any better. An owl about to catch a mean body. And if you doubt that an owl can take on a cat, they will euthanize your pets for you. Speaking of owls, nature gave them feathers for our sake, not theirs. This picture's bad enough until you realize those are its own guts in its mouth, and looking at those lions, they have zero intention of mercying them. They're gonna watch it suffer. Here's a reminder that this prehistoric feathery demon is as tall as some people. They have a longer wingspan than LeBron, and I will see this in my nightmares tonight. This is what a wet sloth looks like, you're welcome. This is a La Mancha goat. As a LeBron fan, I love goats, but if this earless demon ever pulls up to my front door, I'm calling the National Guard. This is why you never do face swap with a chicken. And here you have a crow mourning his dead friend. Crows are highly intelligent and can form strong emotional bonds with members of their- I was wrong. Some images that you're probably gonna unfollow me for. If you can't find a snake in this picture, don't worry. Neither could this bird. Oh, and speaking of birds, this is what a baby pigeon looks like. I've never seen this in my life, and with any luck, I'll never have to see it again. A wraparound tree spider. A hairless baboon. This. This is cursed. Okay, major trigger warning right here. A surin named Toad giving birth. Just a lion, right? Look a little closer. There's a hyena right there, and the lion has no idea. Hyenas have been known to hide inside elephant carcasses. I wonder what shoes he has in his casket. The inside of a kangaroo pouch. No fur, no carpet, just a fleshy purse with a joey inside. 
the mouth of an emerald boa. <laughs>